Welcome back to the show. This episode's brought to you by Good Ranchers. Get great meat at a secure price and 30 bucks off your order with my code Knowles. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use my code Knowles today. We've got a really, really important clip of Joe Biden rambling incoherently that we'll get to in just a little bit. But I don't want to move too fast off this. Now, speaking of weird sex stuff, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not allowed to talk about on YouTube anymore. So if you watch the show on YouTube, you've got to head on over. Sometimes to hear the first, I don't know, the first 10 minutes of my show, you got to head on over to Daily Wire Plus, or you got to go to M. Knowles Show at Twitter. We'll post the whole thing over there. Or you got to go to the RSS feed at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. But there is certain weird sex stuff that at least for now, I think we're still allowed to talk about on YouTube. That would be weird sex stuff involving Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. We'll get to the latest Hunter Biden scandal, a real deep scandal of public interest, not just drugs and hookers and that kind of stuff, but something that really gets to the corruption of his family and his father. But first, I've gone a little lighter on Hunter Biden than a number of conservatives have. They just hammer every picture, every crack pipe falling out of his mouth, every hooker he's video him, himself with, and they're making fun of his drug addiction. And I've tried not to do that because I don't think that people ought to be judged for the bad stuff that they used to do, especially if they've cleaned themselves up. There but for the grace of God go all of us. Everybody's done bad things. All have sinned and fallen short of the, the glory of God. So I'm not going to make fun of him for that. I've got plenty of friends who have been addicts and drunks and everything, so I'm not going to really hit him too much for that. I don't think people should be judged for the terrible things they used to do. I think that they should be judged for the terrible things that they're doing right now so that they can correct those things. And Hunter Biden is currently a huge scumbag. Forget about what he did on Skid Row. Forget about the hookers and the drugs and everything. What this guy is doing right now he, he took his baby mama, London Roberts, to court to try to reduce the child support payments that he is sending to his daughter, Navy. He has this daughter, Navy, that he will not acknowledge, he will not meet. This poor little girl is four years old. Her father openly hates her. And her grandfather is the president of the United States. And he refuses to acknowledge her as well. And her, her grandfather, Joe Biden, oh, good old nice guy Joe, that devout Catholic Joe Biden, he puts up stockings at the White House. His, his, uh, this little girl's grandmother or step-grandmother, Dr. Jill Biden. Oh, sweet old Dr. Jill who writes children's books. She refuses to acknowledge this poor girl too. Girl's four years old. They put up stockings at the White House of all the Biden grandkids, except for one. And then this dirtbag, Hunter Biden, goes into court, says, I want to pay my baby mama significantly less money. This is a guy who's shaken down every corrupt oligarch around the world in Ukraine, in China. This guy is a guy who's made millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, and he won't pay child support to, or he won't pay a, a, a serious amount of child support to his baby mama. And then he, in court, tries to insist that his own daughter isn't allowed to use his last name. That, that they've got to change the little girl's last name or stop her from using the Biden name. He's so ashamed of this four-year-old girl. It's such scumbag behavior. And it's from Hunter Biden, who I guess we expect that from. This idea that Hunter, he's cleaned up, you know, the support of a loving father, that really got him over his addiction. No, he's a complete dirtbag today. And he's, he's doing something worse today than anything he's done in the past, which is hurt his little daughter and scandalize her. And, and this is exactly what the millstone verse of the Bible is about. And, and, and Hunter's dirtbag father, Joe Biden's doing virtually the same thing. As pres Imagine you're a little girl, you're four years old, you're starting to become kind of conscious, you're starting to be aware of things. And what you are told every single day is that your father hates you and your grandfather, the president of the United States, hates you too because you're not good enough to be acknowledged. In fact, they're going to take you to court so that you can't use their last name, which is your last name, because you're their, their daughter and granddaughter. It's just so awful. And Hunter doesn't get nearly enough grief for this. And Joe Biden doesn't get enough grief for this either. Yeah, Hunter engaged in all sorts of colorful, awful behavior and I guess he doesn't do that anymore. Who knows? Maybe he still does. And yeah, he's a corrupt public official, or he's the corrupt son of a public official and seems to be the bag man for the whole Biden family. And that's really bad. And it's, 
kind of run of the mill corruption at a much grander scale than we've seen before. But I don't know. This one gets me a lot worse. Him, the Biden family acting like a, a mafia family going around and shaking down corrupt people around the world, selling American influence. That's worse as a matter of public corruption. But it bothers me less than this. I just think about that. Four, I mean, it's because I have young kids. You think about that four-year-old girl who, who is, whose father and grandfather hate her so much that they'll take her to court to, to avoid acknowledging her. Just, just disgusting stuff from an absolutely disgusting family that should change their behavior as soon as possible. But there, there is an aspect of public corruption here too, which is that we got another Hunter Biden text. So you had that first one, which was Hunter Biden shaking down a Communist Party of China affiliated business executive and saying, hey, send me money. I'm sitting next to my dad. My dad's the big guy over here and we're going to hold a grudge and we're going to make China hurt and we're going to make you hurt and we're going to wield the influence of the United States if you don't send us a payoff now. And the Biden camp, the White House, is insisting that this, these were just the rantings of an addict who was lying, who was desperate you know, trying to compare Hunter Biden to some junkie on the street who goes and steals his grandma VCR or something like that. You know, a guy who's just lying and making things up. Even though you read the texts, they're pretty specific. They seem fairly lucid for a guy who's smoking a bunch of crack and in the throes of addiction. Well, now we got a second text asking for 10 million bucks from a CCP-linked associate. And, you know, if this guy just put down all the stuff that was bad for him, and if he had just started consuming things that were really good for him, he would have had a much better life. He would have, he would have been consuming good things like Good Ranchers. Right now, head on over to GoodRanchers.com. Use promo code Knowles. As our great nation's birthday approaches, we are coming together as Americans and savoring the delicious taste of homegrown American-made meat. Our friends at Good Ranchers have the best quality meats that you've ever tasted, and they only sell meat that was raised here in the USA. From now until Independence Day, Good Ranchers will be offering the best deals to give you freedom from the meat aisle. From ribeyes, New York strips, all-natural burgers, to the most delicious chicken you could ever want, Good Ranchers has something for everyone. Plus, right now, you will get $30 off with our code Knowles at GoodRanchers.com. If you are looking for a way to wow your family during the 4th of July, check out their website recipe of the Texas-style chopped patty melt. I test this out because I want to make sure that I'm not just imagining it. I've tested out Good Ranchers meat at dinner parties with friends, with, with a number of people. They all agree it's just absolutely top of the line. The price is shockingly low. What are you waiting for? Let the mouth-watering aroma of American-made meat fill the air, bringing joy, unity, and delectable flavors to your celebrations. GoodRanchers.com. Use code Knowles. You get 30 bucks off any box. Code Knowles. GoodRanchers.com. GoodRanchers.com. American meat delivered. So we got, we got this new text here. What's the new text? This is uh, days after we, we get the WhatsApp text from 2017 about Joe Biden sitting next to him. Well, now, in a message dated August 3rd, 2017, Hunter tells uh, Gong Wen Kevin Dong, a CCP-affiliated business associate, that he wants to quit squabbling over peanuts and settle on a firm deal by putting, quote, this to bed tonight and get to work. I'm tired of this, Kevin. I can make $5 million in salary at any law firm in America. And why? Is it because Hunter Biden is such a genius expert at the law? I don't think so. I think it's because even if you're working at a law firm in America, he'd be peddling his father's influence. But instead, he, he became even more corrupt and even greedier, and he start, tried to sell his father's influence overseas with the knowledge of his father, by the way. Hunter writes, very simple. $10 million per annum budget to use to further the interest of the JV, of this, of this uh, business interest. This move to $5 million is completely new to me and is not acceptable, obviously. So he's saying, you only want to pay me $5 million a year to sell American influence? I don't think so, Buster. You got to double that. He says, if you think this is about money, it's not. The Bidens are the best I know at doing exactly what the chairman wants from this partnership. Let's not quibble over peanuts. Five million dollars in peanuts. They're very expensive peanuts. But the Bidens are the best. Not Hunter Biden. Not even just Joe Biden. The Biden family. Because this is not a, a, a new kind of behavior that cropped up when Hunter Biden found the crack pipe. This is behavior that the Biden family, including Joe Biden's brother, including the whole family, has engaged in for decades now. And so it's not surprising. What do we take away from this? We take away 
that uh, if you think Joe Biden has not been involved in his family's corruption, I have got a bridge in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware to sell you. But it, this gets to the heart of a lot of the squabbling on the GOP side over 2024 and relitigating 2020, which is a family that does this, a family that sells American influence for millions and millions of dollars brazenly, openly in WhatsApp messages. Joe Biden bragging about it at the Council of Foreign Relations. I went to Ukraine and I told that prosecutor, if you don't, if you don't fire that prosecutor, I'm going to withhold a billion dollars in American aid. And you stop, you, you fire that prosecutor who's investigating the company that's paying off my son a ton of money to, for me to peddle American influence. He's bragging about it. He's open about it. It's all there and transparent. And, you, and you're telling me that a family that engages in that kind of public corruption and a party that sanctions that kind of public corruption wouldn't steal an election? Oh yeah? We just found, what, 300 mail-in ballots in a, in a locker in Michigan from 2020? Bet there are a lot of lockers in Michigan. Bet there are a lot of lockers in Pennsylvania and Arizona and Georgia. I bet there are a lot. You're telling me that a party where the, the two of the three most prominent families in the last 20 years, the Clintons and the Bidens, the Obamas are corrupt too. They come out of Chicago machine politics. But in this case, we're talking about selling American influence, top dollar, engaging in really corrupt activity. And we got, we got the Bidens and the Clintons on this dead to rights at least. You're telling me that party wouldn't steal an election? Give me a break. This is going to be the real issue for me. And I, I need a GOP candidate to explain to me, not how you're going to lock up the border, though that would be good, not how you're going to turn the economy around. It's actually probably straightforward enough. Not even how you're going to wield government power to fix the education system and the culture. And I want to know all that. I want to know how you're going to overcome the Democrats rigging the election like they did in 2020. And I, I need Trump to explain that to me. I need DeSantis to explain that to me. We, you know, we're, we're in the midst of the Chrysosance, the Chris Christie Renaissance. I need Chris Christie to explain this to me and Vivek and Mike Pence and whoever else is running. Okay. And you got to explain that to me because right now the, the Democrats feel that they've got a very solid electoral asset in the way that they've rigged the system. And when you want a solid asset, you got to check out Birch Gold. Right now, text Knowles to 989898. Central banks in countries such as China, China, India, and Australia have announced they are beginning to explore transitioning to a digital currency. The Federal Reserve has been contemplating the same for the U.S. With a digital currency, the government could track every single purchase you make. Officials could even prohibit you from purchasing certain products or easily freeze or seize part or all of your money. Times like these are a great reminder to diversify a portion of your savings into gold. You can do that with the help of Birch Gold. They are the guys that I get my gold from. So do thousands of other concerned savers. Birch Gold will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. You won't pay a penny out of pocket. When currencies fail, gold is a safe haven. How much more time does the dollar have? Protect your savings with gold. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers. Text Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to 989898. Get your free info kit on gold. If a central bank digital currency becomes a reality, it will be nice to have some gold to depend on. Text Knowles to 989898. Speaking of degenerate sort of places that have been destroyed by bad political decisions, San Francisco just hosted Ron DeSantis, or rather Ron DeSantis chose to go to San Francisco as he makes his campaign for presidency, not just about a handful of states, but about coast to coast and a major cultural change. Here's what the governor said. You look around, uh, the city is not vibrant anymore. It's really collapsed because of leftist policies. And uh, these policies have caused people to flee this area. They don't prosecute criminals like they do in most parts of the country. Uh, and the wreckage has really, really been sad to see. And so I've seen so many businesses boarded up. Uh, I've seen so much uh, riffraff just running around. And um, it just shows you these policies matter. Uh, leadership matters. They are doing it wrong here. I really like this look. I like this look of Ron DeSantis being out in the fray in front of this graffitied up building, all this trash on the street in California. What's he doing in California? I like that. I wish we saw more of the delivery here. 
hmm, I wish we saw more of the interaction. Uh, what, I, what I've heard about this trip is that people are coming up to DeSantis in California and saying, hey, man, we support you. <laughs> you know, regular, good, sort of ordinary American people that we all like and support. The crazy libs, they all were yelling at DeSantis, but the normal nice people and the first responders and the cool guys, they all like DeSantis. So I'd like to see more of that. I want to see more interaction. I want to see DeSantis out in the world. The knock on DeSantis right now is that he's a little too stiff. He's not good enough with people. He, he doesn't have that enough riz, you know, to, to use my Zoomer lingo, that he he's, he's running, there's a little bit of a, I don't know, focused, group-tested type of establishment candidate. And he shouldn't run that way, and he doesn't need to run that way. So put him out there. Yes, send him to San Francisco, and let's see him in that fray. That's something that that Trump has that that, uh, DeSantis really needs to to go after. Best I've seen him, but we should go even further down that line if we're talking about a DeSantis kind of campaign. Now, I got bad news for DeSantis, which is that Trump continues to dominate in the polls, and he's getting stronger and stronger in the polls. There's a poll right now out of Quinnipiac that shows Trump not only beating the rest of the GOP field by a lot, which he's doing, but Trump beating Biden. And and not just Trump beating Biden at the national level, which uh, the other night we were on backstage, and I was trying to explain to my uh, friend and colleague Ben Shapiro that Trump is a lot stronger than, than the people who don't like Trump are letting on. And I said, well, one example is that Trump is beating Biden in the polls. And he says, well, those are just national polls. And national polls don't matter because the elections come down to just a handful of states and not even a whole lot of counties. Well, now we have a poll out from Quinnipiac, which shows Trump beating Biden in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is supposed to be Joe Biden's home turf, good old Scranton Joe. And Trump is beating him there head to head, 47 to 46. So it's close, but Trump is still ahead there. So the, the argument that Trump can't win is falling apart. The R, it, it, I always thought it was a silly argument because he won in 2016. So <laughs> the people who say Trump will never, ever win, it's going to destroy the GOP, they were wrong in 2016. But yeah, okay, he was not able to remain the president after the 2020 election. How's that for a diplomatic way of putting it? Uh, and, and he is off-putting to a lot of people, and he does need to do a better job of appealing to people who are a little more centrist and a little bit more in the middle. I'm not denying any of that. It's just Biden looks so terrible right now, and Trump looks so unfairly persecuted that even in a place like Pennsylvania, Trump is currently leading. So now one of the big anti-Trump lines in the primary is gone. It's gone on the idea that he can't win, and it's gone on the idea that, well, the national polls don't matter. Yeah, maybe the national polls don't tell you everything, but the state polls do, and even in the contentious battleground state polls, Trump's looking pretty good. So what is DeSantis going to say to this? Well, the DeSantis campaign pitch is going to be that Trump had the right idea, but he failed in the execution, and I'm going to be the better Trump. Most of us in this room voted to drain the swamp twice. Talk to us specifically about why you're the right candidate to uh, folks in New Hampshire to come behind in this primary to drain the swamp and get it done this time, as opposed to the other choice. It's a great, great question. And what's your name? Okay, thanks, Mark. So the question is, and I remember these rallies in 2016. It was exciting. Drain the swamp. I also remember lock her up, lock her up, right? And then two weeks after the election, ah, don't forget about it. Forget I ever said that. No, no, no. One thing you'll get from me, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm not just saying that for an election. And there are promises I could make that may help me marginally politically, that I don't know that I, could, that I could necessarily follow through on, so I will not make that. And I think the idea of draining the swamp, in some respects, it, I think it misses it a little bit. Because if you, it, we didn't drain it. It's worse today than it's ever been, by far. Uh, and, and that's a sad st- testament to, to the state affairs of our country. But even if you're successful at draining it, the next guy can just refill it. So I want to break the swamp. That's really what we need to do. That's a sophisticated point, which is that not only do you need to fire the bad people, but you need to change the structure that that is causing the problems in the first place. That's all good. And it all comes down to this idea that DeSantis is Trump 2.0, better, bigger, faster, stronger, 
more precise, better at wielding politics. Trump's big strength was that he's a political outsider and, and doesn't really know how Washington works. DeSantis does get how Washington works. He was a congressman. He's been an effective governor. So he's going to take Trumpism and really put it into effect. That's the line. And it's not going to work. That's not going to be, and if that is all the campaign is about, then the DeSantis campaign is not going to win. Because it's New Coke versus Coca-Cola Classic. Coca-Cola Classic, which is the Coca-Cola that we all have today, people really like it. And then some 30, 40 years ago, is it that long at this point? Yeah, I guess it is. The Coca-Cola decides they, they've got a new Coke formula. And they bring it out and it's a complete disaster and they have to return to the old Coke formula. Well, why did they bring it out? Was it just some rogue marketing executive who screwed things up? No, they tested new Coke over and over and over again. And when people were given blind taste tests of new Coke versus the old Coke, people preferred the new Coke. But when the blindfold came off and they knew what the brands were and they, they had a choice between that old thing, the OG, and the new and improved version, they picked the original. And that's exactly what's going on in the GOP primary right now. You could say that DeSantis is better at wielding power and implementing these things, and he's more philosophically and ideologically coherent, and he understands politics better. And you could go down the whole litany of compliments. Yeah, that might be true. But the way that people respond to that, and the way that psychology works, is that People like that original thing, you know, and Trump is an American original. So if the, the DeSantis campaign is going to be effective, it's going to need something in addition to, I'm just the bigger, better Trump. Now, you might have been one of the tens of millions of people who watch Netflix's hit show, Making a Murderer. If so, then you're going to love Daily Wire Plus's new exclusive 10-part docuseries with Candace Owens, Convicting a Murderer, coming this summer. Whether it's exposing Black Lives Matter or certain fallacies in the healthcare industry regarding covid Candace Owens has never been afraid to challenge the narrative. She will find the truth wherever it leads. When Candace found out that key facts may have been omitted in Netflix's series, she set out to uncover the real story behind the notorious Stephen Avery case. The end result is convicting a murderer. You will not want to miss it. Right now, there's never been a better time to become a Daily Wire Plus member. Sign up now for Convicting a Murderer. You will receive an early bird discount of 25% off your Daily Wire Plus membership. You will also get all of the other premium content from Daily Wire Plus, including The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, What is a Woman, and the largest collection of content from Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. Join now at dailywire.com slash subscribe to become a member and see the truth when it finally comes out. My favorite comment yesterday is from Firefly Ivory YT, who says, my goodness, CNN is grabbing at the lowest apples on the tree at this point, anything to try and catch him, to get Trump, to have the walls closing in, of course. But that's what they've been doing since 2016. It's not even that they've run out of good things to go after, and now they're making stuff up. In 2016, when Barack Obama's DOJ and FBI illegally spied on Trump's campaign to try to suppress the political opposition, they just made up the pretext out of whole cloth. The whole thing has been a big fiction from the beginning. Now, speaking of new Coke and old Coke and political campaigns and innovation, Mr. Davies sent me this clip yesterday, and I didn't even want to include it, but, but we have to. We have to, because we, what do they say? They say politics is downstream of culture, which is half true, and uh, culture is downstream of religion. And, and you're seeing an intensifying of religious debate, and... When we talk about religion and Christianity, some people don't even know what we're talking about anymore, especially this priestess from some liberal heretical sect of pseudo-Christianity who decided to change the creed of the religion. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic. All right, enough, and had enough. Two Turn it dads. off. Turn it off. Sorry, don't, can't, not getting through it. Not getting through it. Not gonna, you know, maybe a free speech absolutist would, would say, well, we need to listen to that because the answer to bad ideas is, is just more speech. Or say, nope, not gonna hear that heretical, blasphemous claptrap, but you get the point. That's more than I made it through listening to yesterday when I said I'd put it in the show. What is the point of church? If that's your church, if your version of going to church is going to a building 
and looking at some ridiculous woman dressing up, playing Halloween pretend like a priest with invalid holy orders, r- reciting a creed that amounts to nothing more than uh, the same rainbow pride flag stuff that you're getting in every TV commercial from all the major brands in the entire culture, from the government, from the White House, from your teachers, from your boss, from the HR manager, from every single thing in the culture. And then what the hell is the point of going to church? We go to church to escape this world, to look beyond this world. This is a fallen world governed by principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so when we go to church, when we go to Holy Mass, we get a little foretaste of heaven and we check the worldliness at the door and we do something else, especially when we're, when we're witnessing the holy sacrifice of the Mass and the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not with all the fabulous sparkle, whatever nonsense that she's pretending that Christianity is. It's amazing that these people are so insistent that everybody respect their preferred and inaccurate pronouns, but this woman won't respect God's pronouns that he makes rather clear in the Bible. What's, well, what's the point? Yeah, it, that is offensive to me to hear that. It's very sad and silly for the people who are attending that church and for this poor, misguided priestess. But what's the point? What a wait! Just go to brunch. <laughs> you know, just if you're going to engage in weird, sacrilegious nonsense, then you should do what every other atheist, white girl millennial does and just go to yoga and then go have champagne brunch on Sunday and call that your church. <laughs> but to go and pretend, no, I, it's just the libs do this all the time. They want the appearance of the thing, but they don't want the substance of the thing. They're the sort of people who, they, they drink Diet Coke. They have meatless hamburgers. They, do, they want all the trappings of good stuff without any, any of the meat of it. They want the appearance of church without the meaning. It was, I think it was Niebuhr who had a great line. He saw this coming in the 20th century. And he said that people in modern religion want a God without wrath leading a people without sin into a kingdom without judgment through the ministrations of a Christ without a cross. Now they're taking it to a God and his son without pronouns, without any identity. Okay, well, then you're going to, if you're losing the identity of being himself, of the man who says, of the God that says, I am that I am, then you're losing the whole religion. Speaking of incoherent rambling, this is breaking news. Breaking, stop the presses. Joe Biden is rambling incoherently again. I've long said, and I mean this, I was on the Tibetan Plateau with Xi Jinping. I traveled 17,000 miles with him. I've spoken with him more than any other head of state because it started when I was vice president and President Hu was the president and he was the vice president. We knew president, he wasn't going to be successful. What was on second? It was inappropriate. I don't know. It was on Barack third. to spend that time with him. But I, I spent a lot well, of time. Who's he go? First base. I met alone with him, just he and I, and a simultaneous interpreter 68 times, 68 hours. 68 times, more than 68 Six, hours. 68. By the way, I turned in all my notes. And I got, and I got my, and 68, 68 hours and 68, but no, 68, 68 times more as 525,600 minutes. How do you measure, how do you measure a year, Jack? Do you measure it in inches or centimeters, Jack? That's the metric system. One's the English system, but the English abandoned the standard system. Now it was the metric system. What's a, what's a meter? A meter's in a poem, Jack. Come on, corn pop. There's a report out that uh, Joe Biden is not sleeping very well, and he's got breathing problems when he sleeps, and he has sleep apnea, and he's on a CPAP machine, and that explains not only why he appears dazed and confused, but also why there's some markings on his face now. They're saying the markings are from the CPAP ma- machine. A lot of people use a CPAP machine. It's it's a machine that injects some air, a, a very low pressure flow of air into your nose so you don't suffocate while you sleep and have that disturb your sleep and make you even more dazed and confused. Uh, Though some people have suggested that the marks on Biden's face are not really consistent with a CPAP mask. My grandfather wore a CPAP mask many, many moons ago when he was still alive. And uh, I don't, I don't know, I guess, I don't take the White House at their word for anything, but whatever it is, the guy is not well. The guy is not well at all. And this is not only acceptable in our current system, but it's actually kind of an advantage because 
the, the expectations for this White House are extraordinarily low, and because the liberal establishment gets to prove, gets to actually not just hide this or downplay it, but shove your face in the fact that the country is not currently being run by a president. Going back 100 years, going back more than 100 years to Woodrow Wilson, you've had liberals and progressives saying that the presidency is too big now for any one man. The modern challenges are too big for our constitutional system of government. And so you have to replace that constitutional system with a technocracy and with a liberal establishment that really becomes the supreme law of the land, more so than the congressman, more so than the senators, more so than the president and the judges even, and the constitution. Liberalism is that supreme law of the land. And uh, obviously we've all seen in recent years how when there is a conflict between liberalism and democracy, liberalism always wins. When the people elect Donald Trump, that's a risk to democracy. If they were really talking about democracy, that wouldn't be possible. But when they say democracy, they mean liberalism. When, when a right winger like Viktor Orban in Hungary or Georgia Maloney in Italy or a referendum like Brexit in the United Kingdom, when that's passed by the people, that's a threat to democracy. How? Because it's only about liberalism. So the question for us is, if, if we want to take down liberalism, if we believe that democracy is the best way to do it, how can we ensure that our voices are heard and these very corrupt very proud people are not just going to rig the whole system against us. Now, speaking of technical feats and advancements, today is technology to Thursday. Is it? Is that? I need a, I need a better alliteration for the day. The producers have a challenge for me, which is they've used these new weird, creepy image apps to create AI generated images. And you and I have to guess the prompt. The rest of the show continues now. You don't want to miss it. Become a member. Use code Knowles at checkout for two months free on all annual plans.